I'm Danny. And welcome to our van tour. We've been traveling in this van for three years, all the way from the northernmost point in Alaska down here to Panama with our cat Graham and our dog Sombrita. We bought the van used and converted it ourselves. It's a Dodge Ram Promaster 2500, 159 inch wheelbase, high roof edition. Come on in. the world map is our countertop here. We mod podge it to the wood with a piece of plexiglass on top. This is our fruit hammock, triangular so that whenever we're driving it does not hit the walls and the fruit doesn't get bruised. We have our souvenir magnets that we found around the world and we also have magnetized spice jars that fit onto this metal plate that we got from Great Sand Dunes National Park. So here is our stove. It's inset so that whenever we're not cooking, we can use it as a countertop. Okay, we're heading over to the water system. This is a crucial part of the van. It really determines how long we can stay out here, isolated, wild camping, before going back into town and getting more water. So we have a just a bar beverage sink as our sink, and then our faucet is normal. We do use it on low flow a lot, so that we can serve water so we don't have to leave. We also have it on a switch to conserve energy. Underneath, we have a 14 gallon metal Fusti tank. The double doors are really nice for the breeze, but they're also perfect for refilling our tank. It doesn't have any plastic flavor, which is our favorite part about it. Next to the Fusti tank, we have our sink water collector. We drain it every couple of days. It's just a five gallon jerry can. Over to the cooking system. Under here we have our one gallon propane tank. It lasts about two months and it costs $3 every time to refill. We always shut off the propane at the knob up here and clear the lines whenever we're finished cooking. Next to the propane tank, we have all of our cooking equipment, our pots, pans, and stuff to make hot beverages. Underneath, we have our pet food, our towels that we use as paper towels. Very important to us to minimize waste and our carbon footprint, so we only use cloth towels for cleaning. Behind our towels, we have some extra food storage that we don't use every day, but is nice to have carrying around in the van. Each of us also has a shower bag, contains our soap and towel. We have our drawers. This is the utensil drawer, which holds all of our utensils, stuff for cooking. We also have our reusable napkins in here to reduce our waste. And then next we have our table, our pull-out table that we eat and work on together. Below that is our miscellaneous drawer. This just holds items that we use every day that we need pretty quickly. And then below that is another cabinet where we hold our backpack that we bring into cafes and hostels to work on our laptops, some books, and then below that is some more storage. Okay, so heading over to our overhead cabinets. These are all secured to a beam in the ceiling. On the outside, we have a sand painting from a market in New Mexico. We have this ram that we got in a live art market in Utah. And then we also have this hair thing right here that is just used to secure the cabinets while we're driving. So inside of this cabinet, we have our balls, plates, cups, and the containers we use for leftover food. We also have a couple games in there. In this cabinet, we have all of our dry food. This is stuff that we eat every day, so it's really easy to get to right above the stove. And in this cabinet, this is basically our bathroom cabinet. We have our sunscreen, our first aid kit, toothbrushes, toothpaste, and we even have a mirror. <laughs> we'll head over to our wardrobe, which is also Graham's apartment. <laughs> We've got Danny's clothes, my clothes, Danny's clothes, my clothes. And above the wardrobe, we have two compression packs that we put our coats and sweaters in. So around the back of the wardrobe, Graham also has an entrance from the bed, and this makes it so that the dog can't get to it and he has his own little area. Welcome to our bedroom. <laughs> 
So this is a queen size six inch memory foam mattress and on top it's a bamboo pillow topper, super comfy. The width of the ProMaster is about six feet so we are able to sleep sideways but we did have to cut our mattress a little bit. It's okay though because we're pretty short so our toes never touch or neither does our head. So over here we have our little alien guy who holds our nighttime little stuff. Uh, my aunt made this for us for Christmas one year which is super nice. Over here we have our carbon monoxide detector which also says the temperature sometimes it's not that cool. Down here we have our dimmer switch for the two lights above the bed and we can turn this on and off with our toes before we're going to go to bed. Up here we have our ukulele mounted to the ceiling. This is my favorite part of the bed area. It's a little secret picture frame shelf that we put together with just some hinges, a carabiner, and some string. And for movie nights we can put the laptop on here and we can relax in bed together. It's super nice. So the Central America is pretty warm. So before we came down here, we installed some extra fans in the columns. Um, we have a, they're computer fans and we have a switch that connects to them right next to your head. So you can turn that on and off whenever you get a little warm. And right above our heads, we also have an intake fan, which we can turn on and off right here. So basically while you're laying in bed, you can turn on and off five different fans, which is perfect for Central America. It is very hot here. <laughs> We're moving on to the bench seat. In front of the bench, we have our plaque from our wedding. On this wall, we have the map of Central America where we've been tracking our progress southward. Under this bench, we have our fridge, which is a Dometic top loader fridge, which saves energy and keeps it colder inside. We can hold about a week's worth of food inside and plenty of beers. Over on this box, we have Graham's box. Inside is his litter box, an air freshener, and his scooper mounted onto a wall. On the outside, we have a scratch pad and also his face groomer. And in this box, we have our electrical system, which I'm gonna throw it over to Danny to explain. So in here, we got the solar charge controller, which connects through the wall up to the solar panels and here into the back to the batteries. The batteries are in the trunk as well as the inverter because that's very large. But here we have a remote switch to turn on the inverter so we don't have to dig through the trunk. We also have a Bluetooth device so that we can check the state of the batteries with our phones. Down in here we got the main fuse box. So from here everything runs over to our appliances as well as the smart battery isolator, which allows the alternator to charge our back batteries when we're running in the vehicle. Some breakers for safety. This is the ground bar to connect to ground, the chassis, and a thing to shut off the solar panels if you ever need to. Outside of there, we have also the outlets. We have AC, DC, and USB outlets, as well as our switch to turn on our lights. Probably the best thing about our layout is that under the bed you have tons of storage. So I'm gonna show you guys what we call the garage. Now, under the bed we also store a table, a crash pad for climbing, a couple other things. But down here the first thing you'll notice is the Mexican flag which is somewhat a reminder of home for Sombrita and also privacy for our stuff when we want to leave the doors open and get that breeze. When I organize the trunk, I always like to order by the most used items are easiest to get out. So I'm going to grab out a few of those easy to grab items right now. My guitars, my BMX, and the chairs. We carry five gallons of extra water here which comes in handy. Over here we keep our backpacking gear, which we've used numerous times. Always a good adventure, so we love having that stuff, but it is pretty bulky. And then up here we have some tools and a spare camping stove. So I'll grab that stuff out so you can see the next layer.
so in this side of the trunk we have some recovery gear we have chains we have a tow strap uh, we have over here max tracks and a shovel an extra table but back in here is some important parts of the electrical system this box here is the battery box so you can open that up and look at the batteries inside but from there the cables go forward into that electrical control center and above here you'll see the inverter the inverter converts the DC power from the batteries to AC power that you usually use in your home so we can use laptop chargers and other things that will only run off AC power but that does incur a 20 to 30 percent loss of energy so we do have a lot of cigarette port plug-in chargers to avoid that penalty. On this side of the trunk, we have Emily's bike, another tool chest over here, pet food over there. But what's really cool is that here we can put longer items. We cut a hole in the front there, so the longer items stick through underneath the wardrobe where there's some dead space there. So we can fit my skis, Emily's snowboard, this umbrella for the beach as well as my fishing spear so that is really nice of course we made use of the vertical space by hanging some more items and there's plenty of other random things in here let's go check out the solar panels welcome to the roof up here, you can see our 200 watts of solar, which goes down into our 310 amp hours of battery, as well as the alternator charging that system while we're driving the vehicle. That electrical system for us has been great to run the fans all night or run the heater during the winter, but the sealed lead acid batteries are starting to age a bit after three years, so their capacity is a little less. Besides that, we have here our roof ventilation fans. This is a max air fan, and it's been really great throughout the trip. We decided to mount another one underneath the solar panels here, so we get that inward and outward airflow down here on the Pan American Highway. It's been very useful. Besides that, I store my surfboard up here with just these uh, quick cinch straps that you can undo quickly when you want to get the surfboard down and then pick it back up here and tie it super quick. So that's the roof. Through Danny's BMX friends, we found an artist, Nick Sawyers, to paint the van for us. At first, we wanted to remain stealthy while we parked on side roads and parking lots. But after being in the van for a year and a half, we decided we were gonna head to Mexico and further south. And we knew as soon as we entered these other countries, our license plate was gonna be an oddity anyway. So we thought, let's just paint the entire side of the van. <laughs> We're super glad we did, and it's definitely the most unique part of our van. Welcome to the front room of our house, which is basically a car, <laughs> but it does have some useful things I'll show you now. Up here, we use this loft for a little additional storage for our bags, our hammocks, our cat. One of his many hiding spots, he loves sitting up here. And then down here on the back of the seat, we keep our reusable produce bags. These are great for avoiding using plastic in the grocery store. You can put your veggies and your fruits right in there. Down here, we actually installed a heater. Hard to imagine down here in Panama, but when we were sleeping in ski resort parking lots and it would snow 10 inches on us, we'd wake up, hit the slopes. This thing was critical to maintain our comfort in the van. So it's really nice having a gasoline powered heater because it just works off of your gas tank. You don't have to fill anything else. And it's super safe externally venting all the gases. Something else that really makes it feel nice in here is these swivel seats. It really feels homey in here when you swivel these things. Some other changes we made up here, we installed an aftermarket radio with my dad's help. This is the SSUSB, which stores our music. Got this up in Alaska on a boat tour for spotting the first whale. And then over here, we installed an aftermarket cruise control. 
And down here is the thermostat for the heater. These vans have great huge windows up front for watching the world. But when you're parked and it's hot out, the window covers really come in handy for privacy and insulation. We really wanted to do the conversion ourselves because the cost is way cheaper. It's about a fifth the price of buying one of these built out, as well as you get it exactly how you want. So we were able to add in a bunch of cool little things like the hammocks. So we have two hammocks. One is a full length hammock. Danny uses that hammock to sleep when it's super hot out. Uh, and then it's also the guest bed. <laughs> we also can use that hammock outside. And then we have another hammock that is used to look out the side door whenever we're at a nice vista. That's a pretty sweet chair for extra people to sit. Another cool thing we added is a projector mount. That makes it so the back wall of the van becomes the entire movie screen. It's also really sweet outside. You put a couple magnets and a sheet on the side of the van and you can have a campfire watching a movie. We made practically everything in here. The cushions, the window covers, and even the curtains. We designed our build first using a 3D modeling program. And back then I had one of those VR headsets. So we were even able to check it out in virtual reality and see how it felt. We really wanted the build to be simple and comfortable. Because of that, we were done in three months and it only cost about $3,000 to do the build. Plus, there's tons of space in here. At one point, we even took 12 of my family members for a ride. <laughs> in the end, the build was the most fulfilling, satisfying project we've ever done. When designing a van, there are so many trade-offs. We tried to err on the side of simplicity while we were doing this first hands-on project together. One trade-off we made was not putting a shower or a bathroom in the van. But I really don't mind. Yeah, usually it's pretty easy to find a shower. We do have a camp shower we can use in the wilderness. And besides that, when you have a shower, you need to carry a lot more water. And sometimes people put the plumbing under the van. All our plumbing is inside the van. So when we winterized the van, all I had to do was add a little bit of 12 volt heat tape under the sink and we were done. Bathrooms are even easier to find than showers. But in nature, in the middle of nowhere, you can always dig a hole. Look back at your teepee. <laughs> Another thing that we don't have in the van is an oven, but we do have a stovetop virgin that we use to bake in here sometimes. And we also have perfecting cooking on a campfire. Yeah. Unfortunately, we don't have a four wheel drive van, but we've gone on tons of crazy roads to epic places. It's just that it was really impossible to find a used four wheel drive van and the cost would have been double to buy a new van. One thing that we would have done differently after all this time of living in the van was get lithium batteries in the beginning. They were just really pricey and we didn't know how much we would like living in here. So we thought we'll do an upgrade later. And yeah, maybe we'll do that upgrade sometime soon. <laughs> But even considering the trade-offs we've made, we have loved living in this van. It has offered us cheap, limitless, long-term travel, and as well as amazing comforts on the road. We never have to sleep in any random sketchy beds, <laughs> and we get to bring our two pets with us along the way. We have the independence to cook anywhere we are, do our dishes, and run all these electronics without relying on anyone else. And we have the freedom to do it at the top of a mountain or at an isolated beach. Basically any place accessible by some semi-sketchy roads. We love how the van gets us into nature and that we can use it for base camp for our favorite outdoor activities. We hope you enjoyed the tour. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments and please subscribe so that you can follow on our journey. We've already been from Alaska to Panama and we're heading this ProMaster down to Argentina. Thanks. See you guys next time.